Hello, my name is Luke, and in this video, we're gonna perform sentiment analysis on online comments, specifically online comments referring to publicly traded companies. As the share price of a publicly traded company can be thought of as a sort of reflection of the sentiment of that company, we hope that once we've extracted the sentiment, we can see some correlation between online sentiment and the share price. If you're new to the channel, all the code you see here is available in my GitHub repo, link in the description. So firstly, what is sentiment analysis? Well, sentiment analysis basically involves extracting or determining the overall high level tone of some piece of text. When performing sentiment classification with a transformer like we'll be doing here, the aim is to provide a single label or a given input text. In our case, that's gonna be either positive, negative, or a neutral. So following along from the previous video, we're gonna be looking at Hugging Face's pre-trained transformer models and using those pre-trained models to perform the sentiment analysis. So we don't have to train our own, we can go on Hugging Face and use any of the pre-trained sentiment analysis models that others have uploaded already. In this series, I've already covered a lot about PyTorch and Transformers. So I'm gonna be skipping over a lot of the details involved in what actually Transformers are and the basics of PyTorch. So what we're gonna be doing here today is extracting the sentiment for some online comments around a particular publicly traded company and comparing that with the share price to see if we can find any correlations there. To do so, as I said, we're using PyTorch with Hugging Face's pre-trained transformers. Specifically, we're taking a sentiment analysis model that was fine-tuned on social media comments around financial things. So this model was fine-tuned on a hand-labeled data set and labeling the sentiment of the comments, positive, negative, or neutral. So like I showed in the previous video, we can very easily set up this model. We're doing this for the first time, this will download the model and the tokenizer. So unlike the previous video, we're actually gonna be putting both of these into a Hugging Face pipeline that will combine the tokenizer and the model so that we only need to provide the pipeline with our text and it will output directly the output of a model. We don't need to do tokenizer and model. The pipeline will handle that for us. I'm not gonna go over scraping online comments. I've already done this and made a little data set for one particular company. There's a lot of videos out there on how you can scrape online comments from various sources. I've scraped the comments from one particular company on an online stock forum and put them into a zip file for you so that you can run this code. But if you wanna do it on your own, you'll need to work out how to scrape from whatever particular location you want the comments from. I've just created a PyTorch data set here. I'll unzip that folder and load up the comments. If you look in that directory, we'll see that we have basically a lot of text files, each one containing the timestamp for the comment and the comment itself. So the company we're gonna be looking at is NAB or the National Australia Bank. So we can create that data set and then turn that into a data loader. And let's have a look at an example comment. So as I mentioned, we have the timestamp or the comment down to the minute and also the actual text. As an example, let's put this through our sentiment classifier. So here we're actually randomly sampling one of the comments from the data set, not this exact one. Let's try another one. Here we go, couldn't resist buying again. And this is rated as positive with confidence 0 0.913. So the max confidence of one. Let's just have a quick look at the other outputs as well. You can see we actually get three. We get a score for positive, negative, and neutral. These will sum up to one. It is a soft max classifier. And we're gonna use the positive and negative outputs to construct what I'm calling a sentiment score, but we'll go into that in a second. One thing to keep in mind, especially from this example here, is that you can see this comment is specifically referring to two different companies, even though we extracted this from the NAB forum. But this sentiment actually reflects both NWS and NAB. It's just something to keep in mind as we're going forward and what I'll talk a bit about at the end. So the next step is now to put the entire data set through our model and extract all of the sentiments as well as log the actual timestamp data as well. Okay, so we've now extracted the sentiment from all of our comments and logged them. I'm now gonna turn that into a pandas data frame just so we can organize it a bit nicer. I'm gonna set the index of that data frame to the date time or the timestamp of the comments. We're then gonna sort the entire data frame by those timestamps so that it's organized nicely. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we're gonna construct a sentiment score using the positive and negative comments. What I want is a sentiment score that is both positive and negative, depending on which is higher, positive or negative. Because we have actually three outputs, positive, negative, and neutral, what we're gonna do is take the positive outputs, subtract the negative, and then divide by the sum of the positive and the negative just to normalize it. What we're then gonna do is resample the data frame every day by taking the median. So we're gonna take the median score every day. We'll also get some NAs if there's no comments on that particular day and we'll just fill them with zeros. Yeah, I also wanna just keep track of the number of comments that there was per day and we'll look at that later on. And also to clean things up a bit, we're gonna perform a 28 day moving average. So we can visualize our sentiment score and its moving average. We can see here. You'll notice that we have actually have some comments from quite a long time ago. These may be spurious. They might be actually incorrectly timestamped or something like that. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically chop our data set and remove all those ones and only keep these ones where it looks like we have a denser number of comments. Okay, so now to compare this moving average to the actual share price, we're gonna use the Yahoo Finance Python library to download the actual stock price data for this company for the last nine years, which corresponds to this range of comment data that we have. Once we've done that, we're also gonna resample this per day so that we have a price for every day, even on weekends. For weekends, we're gonna get not a number, so we're gonna fill forward that price data. So we're gonna take you know the price data on Friday and feed it forwards into Saturday and Sunday. We'll also have comments on the weekend when the market's not open. We're gonna use the close price for our analysis here, and we're gonna get the 28 day and 120 day moving average of that. And as we'll see later on, we're actually going to take the difference between our close price and the 128 day moving average. And this close difference is going to give us the sort of short term movements of our share price. And finally, we're only going to take the data that actually corresponds to the last nine years for our sentiment data here. Okay, so let's plot the moving average of our score over the close price. Here we've got this on twin y axis. So on the left, we have our sentiment score. And on the right, we have the actual price data. But just from looking at this, you can see there are quite a few locations where the sentiment movement and the price movement seems to line up. Specifically here, you can see the big drop from COVID where both the sentiment and the share price drops around the same time. And you can see there are some other relations here where the share price and the sentiment movement seems to be pretty similar. Though it doesn't seem to line up that well in other locations. And the reason for this is that our sentiment is a reflection of the short term Sentiment. So day to day, and we've done a move me average. So it reflects the sentiment over a short period of time, whereas yes. share price also has the sort of cumulative or long-term trend in it. So that's why we did that subtraction of the close price with the moving average to get that short-term movement, which is a better reflection of what the sentiment analysis is actually showing us. So we can actually see that here where we have the moving average overlaid over the raw stock price. And our difference will be the actual price subtract the moving average. So let's now plot the moving average of our sentiment of this detrended closing difference price. And if we look at this now, we can see a lot more correlation between the sentiment and the actual price data. You can see that a lot of the peaks in the actual price line up quite nicely with a lot of this sentiment. And in a few locations, the alignment of the movement is quite nice. And even when it doesn't quite line up exactly because of scaling issues, you'll see that there are peaks in the same location for both our sentiment and the price data. And as I mentioned at the start, this isn't too surprising. Both the price and our comments are a reflection of the company. So I suspect the sentiment from the comments is a reflection of the share price. So if the price goes up, then there'll be a lot of positive comments. If the price goes down, there'll be a lot of negative comments. So it's potentially more descriptive of the share price rather than predictive of the share price, but we can still potentially extract a lot of useful information from this. You can see in some locations, especially recently, that it doesn't line up that well at all. This could be for a number of reasons. Potentially we don't have enough comments from around this time to actually accurately represent the actual sentiment around the company. And also, like I showed you at the start, some of these comments aren't only referring to the specific company. They could be referring to other companies as well as NAB, or they could actually be talking about a different company in the same forum. Or someone could be saying like, that's a really good point in response to another person who said that the company's doing really badly. So an additional step we might need to take here is to try and determine what the comment is in reference to. So here we've kind of taken the shortcut of only extracting comments from a particular forum that references a particular company and are assuming that all of the comments will be referencing that company, but that is not true as we've seen already. So that could be messing up the data as well as potentially a lack of comments. So we can see here, if we actually look at the number of comments daily, you can see around COVID, there was a big boom in the number of comments. But more recently, you can see that there's actually not that many comments. Previously before COVID, you can see there was actually a few more comments and that might actually describe why before this big COVID spike, did seem to follow the price data a bit better than it does more recently. So I'm gonna leave it there. This is just a short one. If you like this sort of content, would like me to go into this in more detail, let me know in the comments. If you wanna see more, remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.